Welcome to this Golf Channel pod with Rex and Lav. This week's edition, all about Tiger Woods. He's teeing up this week at the Genesis Invitational. He talked on Tuesday, Valentine's Day, February 14th in L.A. That's where I'm stationed. Rex, you are definitely not at home. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Real quick, where'd you get the bunk mate since you weren't home on Valentine's Day? You clearly got her something special. Uh, addressed that today, actually, on Golf Today in front of a national audience. Totally blanked on it because it's not as though this is not a calendar. No, no. Totally blanked on it. And here's the scary part is I've sent her like five texts today, just randomly like, uh, hey, what time's the lacrosse game tonight? And can you look for this in my room? Nothing back. Uh, once you get radio silence, oh, you know. Oh, no. It's, You're getting I'm ghosted so by your own <laughs> wife. <laughs> on Valentine's Oh, you hate Festival. to see it. You hate uh, to see it. I don't so know how you trouble. could possibly forget uh, the greeting card national holiday, uh, but apparently you did. Uh, I'm sure she was not tuned into golf today as well. Bunkmate, I would never forget you. In fact, I may text you a happy Valentine's don't. Day. This is this podcast recording <sighs> is over. Rex, you are in Connecticut. Uh, I know I was being vague there. You're in Connecticut co-hosting uh, golf today. How are things going on the desk with Damon? Uh, it, it's fun. Damon's it's so much fun to be around. And we had a we had a guy on the show yesterday morning, and I'm going to blank on his first name. Maybe Mike Booker. His last name is Booker. Anyway, he had written a a, a book about like having a positive attitude on the golf course, and and I think the the title of the book is a guide to a tournament golfer's mind or something along those lines. And I wanted that interview to go on for three hours because for every example he gave me of having a positive outlook and. Look, as long as you're, you're, I think one of the phrases he used was, you're your own best friend on the golf course. And I'm like, I know whoever a PGA. Thinks, whoever talks like that. I, I know a tour full of players who are not their own best friends. They are their own worst enemies. And the only thing I could come to was, all right, like, I get where you're coming from, Mr. Booker, but explain to me, John Rahm. Like, if all that makes sense, if you believe, truly believe everything you're saying. His internal fire works Rahm for is. him. Yes. Not, not against yeah. him. Works for him. Like and, and we've had this discussion a lot recently, I felt like. A, a lot of people are uh, motivated by negative things. But in this particular case, I was like sitting on a, on a desk next to, of all people, Damon Hack, who you have spent enough time around and oh, we both know. Lovely, optimistic, eternal, and it was like, eternal, uh, eternally happy. And I was trying so, so, so desperately to turn on my dark Eamon Lynch, like, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, you have to go straight to the dark places in your life and you have to be motivated by all the negative things. I was really caught in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I would have handled that well. The cameras would have caught me rolling my eyes, scoffing at him, like literally so. chortling, chortling out loud. Uh, I yeah, I'm, mo I'm motivated by many things. It is not a uh, happiness. Yeah. It's fear. It's doubt. It's failure, uh, <laughs> death, uh, whatever the case may be. Those are the things uh, I am motivated for. Rex, you haven't, even remarked, you haven't even remarked you're... on my background. It is wonderful. No, and the palm tree is well placed. It's almost like you know what you're doing. You're outside. It looks a little chilly. It looks like an absolutely perfect Los Angeles day. Tell me, I'm just curious. You had to go in a day early. And last night you did the boldest of bold and dangerous moves. You went to In-N-Out Burger on your very first night in L.A. Is that true? Of course I did. I have had zero uh, internal combustion whatsoever. I probably won't go back uh, the rest of the week. Uh, we are in L.A. They're a little bit more health conscious uh, than they are in Jacksonville. Uh, but no, I thought that was a good tone setter for the week. I feel totally fine on Tuesday. Zero issues whatsoever. I'm not, I'm not an old man like you with a, with a uh, questionable digestive system. But you did this on Monday, which, of course, as we all know, is the day after the Super Bowl, which I'm sure you did not take care of yourself that day. I'm sure there was plenty of bad food and maybe a couple of drinks mixed in there. So you're on back to back bad days here. Uh, yeah, we can certainly uh, circle back on the Super Bowl party. You know what? Hosting hosting is a little bit overrated. Uh, I actually ate less, way less than I you're ever would because I was uh, too busy making sure everyone else was well fed. Uh, the drink situation, however, uh, was a different story uh, by the time that I that I flew out uh, at I think 725 on Monday I was fine um, but any anything earlier I think there was like a 620 flight that I could have taken that would have been uh, that extra hour uh, rest was was certainly helpful a.m. or p.m. a.m. Ooh, wow yes no yes. I wouldn't have done that because I was tucked myself and tucked myself into bed at midnight and that alarm went off at 430 
Well, this is what I was curious about, and we're going to waste five minutes here at the top of the podcast just to, to make those who listen to this. Type I was just this talking in. to Joel Shookman of the, of, the, of the PJ Tour. He said, "Did you guys cut down your diatribes at the beginning of the podcast?" I said, "You no. betcha." I said, we, "We we never go nine minutes anymore. It's always like three or four. Now, you know what? That's why there's a fast forward button. Just hit the fifteen second forward until you're done with this nonsense. Because I have to ask. As soon as I saw the text message from you last night that you went to In and Out, I have like a very rigid schedule. I, I get In and Out when I'm in Los Angeles. On my way to the airport on Sunday night. That's yes, from my which reward. is a terrible idea. <laughs> that's well, a, that's not a, that, that might that might be your reward, but I promise you, and the person in six B <laughs> or sixteen C, they're not going to be they're not going to be so happy you went to In and Out before the red eye. But I feel like, and and there's probably something to this. I feel like I have a routine where, like, if if I'm in San Diego at Toy Pines, like Wednesday night. I'm going to the Brigantine because they had the best fish tacos in, in all of that area. I, like I have my places that I go to on certain nights. And so Monday night in and out just threw me for a loop. I was, I just did not know how to respond to that. Uh, I was a little frazzled. Look, uh, flying across the country is not as easy uh, as it used to be. I went to bed at like 6.45 last night, woke up, woke up at 6.15. You're getting so old. I almost got a, You're getting almost old. got a full 12 hours. Almost got a full 12 hours rest. Uh, so I felt great. I felt spry. Uh, I was eager. To get to the golf course this morning, unfortunately, then ran into uh, the school traffic in which it took me 45 minutes to go half a mile. That's besides the point here at the Genesis Invitation. But I think Rex, one of the like reasons it. why I was so excited to get to Riviera is because Tiger Woods met with the nice. media today. He was one of those late commitments, right? The Genesis Invitational. There, I, I, I wrote about this on GolfChannel.com. You guys can uh, check it out. It should post here shortly. This was different in that, unlike previous years, there wasn't like a breathless anticipation as this tournament deadline was approaching, I don't think it really even crossed my mind that that he that he could or or would end up playing in this. Um, I thought it, the Players Championship, being just a couple hours north from his home in South Florida, I give him a month uh, to recover, reassess, heading into the Masters. I always thought that one made a little bit more sense. What was your, I guess, level of surprise? Uh, when you saw that tweet come across that he was going to play at an actual PG Tour event for the first time since October actual. 2020. All caps, actual. All caps. Because that, that's the way you have and then, to do and then, it. And um, the PGA Tour, PGA Tour is capped uh, during the broadcast. I hope you noticed that one as well. I did. I caught that as well. Um, and Damon asked me the same question yesterday. And I, I'm in the business with my job. I should probably not be surprised by these things. I should probably see these things come. And I should have an idea that, okay, Tiger might play Riviera. I was shocked. And I think you sent me a text. I was actually sort of just relaxing. I just worked out. It was it was last Thursday. And out of the blue, you sent me a text. And I was like, this can't be happening. Like, I, I just – I was stunned. because oh, it's oh, happening. My, my mind went back to the PNC Championship last December, just, just barely two months ago now, when you go back and you kind of look at it in the time frame. And there is nothing that I saw over – again, 36 holes, driving in a golf cart, playing a team event with his son on a flat, warm Florida golf course – Nothing that I saw suggested, oh, in two months, it'll be good to go. It'll be perfect for Riviera. That, that never even crossed my mind. And look, he has he's spoken truth to power in enough of these press conferences. He has talked about, even today, it was, I want to play the major championships and maybe, quote, unquote, a couple others. And of course, this would be one of the, quote, unquote, couples, right? Because th this tournament benefits his foundation. There's every reason for him to be there, be here for that. It's a designated event. He was highly behind that. He was a huge moving force to get the PGA Tour to create this uh, new event. All of those things being said, would have never guessed it. I mean, I had I had no idea because watching him get out of the golf cart and take, let's say, four steps to a golf ball at the PNC, nope, didn't see it happening. He must have made a wonderful recovery in the time frame. Yeah, talking to a member of Tiger's inner circle uh, earlier Who's this that? afternoon. Who was that? Uh, he's... He said it was essentially a, like a last minute call, like on Friday, like, yeah, I feel pretty good. Let's do it. And then the phone call went to Joe Lakov. It wasn't like they were just slow playing this. And then just for the sake of, of slow playing it, like we've seen Tiger Woods do in the past, this was like, a yeah, I feel pretty good. I think I can do this. It'll be fine. Keep in mind, Tiger Woods has not yet walked 72 consecutive holes uh, over four days in South Florida as preparation for this. So he'll kind of be winging it. Uh, he did not play. On Tuesday, uh, just headed to the practice range uh, just about an hour or so ago. But he is playing an 18-hole practice round, 6.30 a.m., Rex. That is going to be, I think, a low of 41 degrees on Wednesday morning. Uh, so that'll be difficult, not just for Tiger, uh, but for your intrepid reporter as well. So it certainly sounds like Tiger Woods was 
was shooting the scores that he wanted to see in practice. His, his body, his body felt good. Whatever good means uh, these days. Now that he's 47, uh, with a body that is that is breaking down as we speak. But I think it's a huge boon to the tournament, obviously, which benefits his foundation. It's a huge boon to the PGA Tour. I haven't seen him in a regular tour event like this in two and a half years. Uh, and so there's certainly a, a level of excitement that wouldn't have existed otherwise, even though you do have you know, the top 23 players in the world who are eligible playing this week. And I, I pointed this out on the show today with Damon that I, I went back to Sunday in the lead up to the Super Bowl and how everyone talked about it was the training staff and everyone in the Kansas City organization who made sure that Patrick Mahomes really over the last two games of this season was physically able to go. We all saw how bad that ankle was. He limped, spent the whole game limping around and they couldn't heap enough praise on the training staff. I felt the same way today watching him because we were watching it. By the way, we, we were getting the live shot while we were on TV. And at one point, we're waiting to see Tiger Woods. And the first thing I see, which kind of got my ears perked up, because we're vamping, which in, in TV talk means we're just filling time until we get to Always what they dangerous. really want. Always yes. dangerous. Nothing, Always good, dangerous. nothing good comes from vamping. We vamp for 12 minutes today. You want to talk about oh, I don't God. know that I've ever been on TV. What a nightmare. <laughs> sweat was visibly coming down my forehead with every question that Damon just deflected. <laughs> back to me but the first thing i see when the live shot comes up is we're vamping and so i'm already trying to scramble it's you just bopping down that little walkway just happy as can be and it's like you're in your own little world you're beep, boop, boop. where was you i no uh you were walking where all right so the clubhouse would be on your right the putting greens on your left and i think oh, that yeah. the camera yeah so i can you know exactly where you were that was hilarious yep. uh but I go back to my point. We were talking today about the idea that, again, go back to what I saw at the PNC, go back to last Thursday. I was shocked. I don't think you can give enough praise to Tiger Woods' staff, the people he has around him. Rob McNamara, who's, of course, with him every step of the way. But the one that came to mind was Colby Teller, who's his trainer, who is, is I think he's made a huge difference They're physically miracle for workers. Tiger Woods. They are miracle Seriously. workers. Seriously. Humpty Dumpty back together again. I thought that the Masters – First, I mean, that was his first competitive appearance in what 14 months since the car accident. To be able to to walk that golf course, uh, so so uh, short removed from that horrific car accident, and what it what it mangled his leg. I mean, it was unbelievable. The staff being able to do that with with making the cut as well. And I spent some time around Colby. I've had a chance to watch him train other golfers. I've had a chance to sort of pick his mind about what he wants to do. And Kay Wayne is one of the best in the business. And you can see it. This is like his Mona Lisa, I would argue. I mean, he would probably <laughs> sort of deflect that idea and say that Tiger did all the work. And there's certainly something to that. But being ready to do this for whatever reason, whether if it's for the foundation, whether if it's for Southern California or because he grew up 40 miles from here, whatever the case may be, that is a modern miracle. It really is. I also think Colby's uh, training regimens for Tiger Woods and one of his other clients, uh, Justin Thomas, uh, is probably a stark difference to be sure. But look, I mean, Tiger Woods, it was almost nonchalant, like the fact that he was playing this week. Like he threw out a line like I would not put myself out here if I didn't think I could beat these guys and win this event. Like that's my mentality. We've heard that um, over the past uh, 25 second years. Sucks. That's or, the modern so. version of second sucks. Yeah. However, expectations had certainly been tempered to the point now where you know we say just stay upright for 72 holes i remember talking about that at the masters and the pga championship like if tiger woods can just stay upright for 72 holes i think we would deem that a success and so one of the things i wanted to explore rex that i did uh for a column on golfchannel.com tonight this is tuesday night i'm uh, referring to is i kind of talked about the the parallels that we're seeing with tom brady and patrick mahomes and the current state of the NFL versus Tiger and the Rory's and the Roms and the Scotties and the modern look of the PJ Tour. Tom Brady, of course, uh, just retired about a month ago after an unparalleled career, seven uh, Super Bowl titles. And now Patrick Mahomes with his second MVP, and second Super Bowl title in his first six seasons has kind of become the heir apparent, right? Like the place the guy who's already cemented his spot in Canton. Uh, and now there's talk that he could uh, eventually overtake Tom Brady as the GOAT. And so Tom Brady... He retired for 40 days in February 2022, ended up coming back this year. And even though it was a down year, but his lofty standards, um, he's the league of passing, right? And uh, still led the Bucks to a playoff berth. And yet he retired this time, quote, for good, because he basically had nothing left to give uh, and nothing left to prove. Tiger Woods has not had anything to prove Rex for a decade, <laughs> if not more. I mean, he could have walked away certainly after the fusion surgery in 2017, could have walked away 
after the Miracle Masters win in 2019. Could have walked away, certainly, after the car accident here two years ago uh, that mangled his right leg. And so I kind of wanted to explore the motivations, the competitive DNA, um, the desires of clearly guys who are freak athletes. I don't mean that uh, in a derogatory sense. I mean, these are guys who are outliers. They are athletic anomalies. And Tiger Woods has certainly been that. And he had a great answer, I thought, uh, to Kevin Val- Van Valkenburg, how uh, Tiger talked deeply about how he's not ready to enter the ceremonial phase of his career. People like you and I may have already put him there, right? Like he's just an elder statesman. Nope, he's just nope, going through nope. motions. You're not doing maybe that to me. T- nope, I didn't do maybe, that. Maybe, did it. maybe, t- maybe T35 is the best he can accomplish. Tiger Woods is not, is not there yet. He may get there quickly. He may get there in the next few months. Uh, once a major championship season rolls around, he may get there at the end of the year. He may get there in five years. We don't know. Um, but I thought the unwillingness to view himself in that light, even as the injuries mount, even at his advanced age of 47, even as you know the PJ Tour gets younger and deeper than ever before, I thought was really revealing. Um, and it, it was kind of a look into the, the mindset of a guy who's clearly just wired differently. Uh, no, that's interesting because we kind of had a similar conversation. As we're listening to the press conference today on the set, it was myself and Damon Hack and Jaime Diaz, our colleague who is brilliant and he's been around Tiger longer than any of us. He knows Tiger better than all of us combined. And as we're having this conversation and we're sort of – we walked out in the hallway because they had free food. And so during the Tiger Woods press conference, I have to get free food. That's an obvious choice. But Jaime says something about 16, so 16 majors. Well, you know, maybe 16 is what, what's right. And, and from the other end of the hallway, I hear this conversation, and I yell at the top of my young lungs and add no context to it whatsoever. 83 is all I bark. 83. Because I feel like that, yes, 16 is certainly on his radar. And then if he gets to 16, and now all of a sudden. 16 you know, well, is only- not 18. 16 is get you within two of, of Jack at 18, whatever the case may be. I, I just don't believe at this point in his career, even Tiger Woods, who clearly is optimistic, cautiously optimistic, but is optimistic that he can continue to do this. Even then, I'm not quite sure he can make that mental hurdle. I mean, that's a big leap between 16, 17, 18. And let, let's be honest, 83, though, if if he can start adding the occasional Genesis but 83, invitation. but 83 is probably going to end up being 16, right? Like I think the Genesis invitational is a one-off. He didn't mention the player's championship when he was talking about his schedule. He said, I'm going to play here and then we'll reassess for Augusta. He didn't, he didn't say for TBC Sawgrass and the player's yeah. championship. I, I think this is probably going to be probably his one-off for the year. Maybe, maybe. And we'll, we'll have to see going forward. Cause I'm sure, I mean, the, the one thing that I thought, thought was interesting that he said was a couple of others and he would like to play more. We would all like him to play more. It seems obvious. However, the body is just not go- going to let him do that. Now, the one thing that I pointed out to, to Damon Hack when, when he asked me point blank, you know, how do you assess his chances here? And I, I look, I've used this line on the podcast before. I think you've used the line. I've gotten out of the Tiger Woods. I'm out of the Tiger Woods business. doubting business. There it is. <laughs> there so it I trotted is. out the old line. I trotted out one of the old favorites. However, in this case, he fired back with, oh, so you think this week? And I kind of – I I did sort of the – the, the, the dismissive laugh that well, no oh no not here oh no never here because even when he was at his absolute best he never won here so i don't know why no. anyone would think that he could do it here and my concern is like i'm going to be just wildly interested in to see after that tee shot on one tomorrow morning it's 41 degrees it's 6 30 in the morning it's freezing cold it's probably going to be a little bit of wind from what i saw that is not an easy walk down that hill i'm not sure you can make it down that hill I'd rather, so I'd rather go down little... the hill. I'd rather go down the hill than climb the stairs after a, after already walking 18 holes, going back up the stairs to the clubhouse. No, that's not true. Because you made a very very good note of pointing this out last year that when Joaquin Neiman won, and Tiger Woods had to go down to the 18th green from the clubhouse to give him the 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 you know the award you know the trophy, he bounded back up the hill like he was trying to prove something. Not but he also him. didn't just he also didn't just walk and play 18 holes. That was a totally. that was a big difference. Totally true. To- totally true. I-, I just think in this particular case, like, look, you- you're probably right. This is a chance to let's knock some rust off. Let's see how close I am to being ready for Augusta. I-, I would argue that the most encouraging thing, regardless of what happens the next two days, four days, five days, whatever the case may be, is the fact that yesterday he had enough interest to go over to LACC and take a look at the North Course, which, of course, is going to host cart. the U.S. Open. Driving around in a golf cart. In a not, golf cart. Play. Driving around in a golf cart. Yeah. No, go- no golf clubs. None of that. 
But that at least shows me this is a guy who missed the U.S. Open last year because of injuries. And so I, I'm encouraged by that one nonetheless. Oh, certainly. I, I think it was uh, a, a given, you know, uh, health issues, notwithstanding that he'd be playing LACC for the U.S. Open this year back in his uh, old hometown uh, a, a golf course we haven't seen in a major championship Broda uh, for a very long time. If there's one that he's going to miss, it's probably going to be the PGA at Oak Hill. Cause you talk, you talk about cold here. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm from, I'm from Pittsburgh, New York. Uh, that could be uh, downright frigid. You, you mentioned kind of the motivation and the, and the desires for Tiger. And you make a good point there. Uh, there's certainly a lot of carrots there, whether it's, it's 16, whether it's 83. Uh, I think Charlie Woods, uh, his son, is certainly a motivation, a driving force, uh, keeping him competitive, keeping him want, wanting to be out there. He, you know, he talked years ago uh, when he was mired uh, with all those back issues of, of not wanting to be just a YouTube golfer. And that was kind of quenched, right, with uh, not just the Zozo, but, of course, the Masters title back in 2019 as well. So there's, there's certain motivations there. And I, it, it, Justin Rose actually talked about this, um, how – it's more just proving it to yourself that, you know, as an athlete and someone who's been around as long as Tiger has 25, 26 years uh, on the competitive stage, like you go through different iterations of who you are as a competitor and it's proving to yourself that you can still do it. That would be deeply satisfying. And so Tiger Woods said he hasn't been fueled by doubters for years, but having to prove it himself uh, is kind of, is, is kind of his driving force now. I thought that was a masterclass. We listened to the Justin Rose interview today, and I thought it was interesting. I was, I was hoping that the likes of Ricky Fowler and Jason Day were listening in on that because it's interesting when you go through the dark times, when you get to a point in your career when you probably think, and look, I'm probably guilty of this, that Justin Rose was washed, that he was of a certain age. I, 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 I had him pegged as one of the, the guys who would go to live golf, all of those things, and, and for him to turn it around, and I think the number was – 1,471 days, if I have it right, in between victories. That, to me, shows exactly what Tiger Woods is probably thinking right now. Completely unrelated, if you get the response from the bunkmate and the and, and, and the, the text is, you rang, that, that can't be good, can it? If it's, oh, if it's just you rang, that, that's so bad. I mean, oh. you rang. The, I mean, the doors, the doors are locked. Uh, your clothes are on the front stoop. Did, did you ask what she got you for Valentine's Day, or is this just like a one-way street? Uh, no, she never gets me anything for Valentine's Day. It's a one-way street. Come on, stop. Throw it back to her. Why don't, you, why don't you throw it back to her and see how it goes? Yeah. Looked around the, the residence and room. There's no flowers in here either. Let's hope she doesn't <laughs> listen to the podcast. Moving on. Uh, never mind. You, you, said you're, you said you're not in the uh, – you said you've gotten out of the Tiger Woods betting business. What's your expectation this week? Doubting, what's he, what's not betting do? business. Tiger Woods betting business. Um, it, it would be an accomplishment for him to make the cut. And like I said, that's that's doubting Tiger Woods, and I know what I, I just said, so I'm falling back on some bad habits here. <laughs> I just think the conditions this week probably don't favor him. The fact that the last I mean, he's time playing, I saw he's playing he's playing at noon local time on Thursday. Now Friday, I think is tea time somewhere in the seven thirty of the city. That could be cold, but that's that's certainly not going to be a factor uh, in his opening round. He'll it'll be it'll be it'll be the warmest of the day. Let's put it that way on Thursday. And again, I go back to the idea. This is his 15th start. He's never won this one. Like, look, even at his absolute best, he, he never was very, very good. And, and it's interesting when you look at his record here on this. He's never even really had a he, chance. Like, he's had, uh, he's well, had he had a run around there. Yeah, he's had, uh, it was a, 20 years ago. Yeah, it, it was a minute ago. If you look kind of pre and post 2008, I mean, when, when he left here in 2008 and he withdrew because of the flu, he kind of shut the place down. It was dead to him. He didn't go back for quite a few years. And there's only been a handful of starts since then, really, since he became the host of the event and it started to benefit his foundation. So it's not entirely fair because you would think sometime between 2008 and now that everything would have fallen in place and he'd have figured out how to do it. But it makes no sense to me at, on this particular golf course. He just hasn't he – has, he just hasn't been Tiger Woods. Greens, uh, Kikuyu grass uh, certainly He grew up on these, on these greens. He grew up That's on a, these greens. Again, again, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of scar tissue that has accumulated over the years when it comes to Tiger Woods and putting on these greens. I, I do think I do think he'd make the cut. Uh, clearly, he has seen something in his practice that we are not privy to, obviously. He's seen something at Medalist that leads him to believe that he can play well or he would not put himself on a worldwide stage 
uh, knowing that every single swing is going to be dissected by people like us. So I do think he'll make the cut. And you look, even though this is a designated event, right? So there's, there's been a lot of talk about this, and I want to get your uh, thought on it now. For a designated event, so this is one of the marquee events on the PJ Tour schedule. I think you and I would both agree. There's a lot of fluff on this back end. And there's been rumblings. There's been talk on tour that these designated events, right, could be trimmed. I think there's like 130 players this week. Could be trimmed into kind of that BMW championship model of 70 players. Maybe it's 90 players, 100 players. That is still very much TBD as both Tiger Woods, uh, who's kind of orchestrating these meetings, as well as Scotty Scheffler uh, said on Tuesday. It's still very much in flux. But is the tour better off reducing these fields to make it strength on strength or is there still room for the Nick Taylors of the world, right? Who pushed Scotty Scheffler all the way to the finish line last week at the Phoenix Open, was tied for the lead uh, heading into the 70th hole of the tournament, and ended up finishing in second place. Where do you fall on that? If you're looking at from a, a purely entertainment product, because right now Tour's facing an existential threat with Live Golf, they have to ensure that their product is as good as it could possibly be. What do you think of the field size, and is there still a place for those dreamers? I'm sure you saw Brandel Chambly's tweet. I believe it was on Sunday. Maybe it was Saturday last week when the tour was in Scottsdale. And they were talking about the Nick Taylor thing, that if you do what you just kind of mapped out, which my understanding is that's the way the tour is leaning, to make these designated events limited fields, whether that's 70 players, 60 players, whatever the number is that they're dealing with right now, it's going to be limited fields. Keep in mind, this is only 130 players, so it's already a limited field event, but they want to knock it down even more. Brandel's argument was if you did that, you would do away with the Nick Taylor, which was a good story last week. And we pretty much have 200 that something, 200 something in the world, but he had one twice on tour. It had been a minute since uh, he challenged. Yeah. Like it was, it was a really good story. And I think we run into those almost every week on tour, whether or not, if it's, if, if it's that Cinderella story that wins or just contends, it's still part of the equation. I would say when I saw today that you, you covered the collegiate championship challenge. I believe that's what it's called, right? Did I get that right? Sure. Having, having, sure. Haven't covered that in a minute. But yeah. But it, when you look at the winners of that, when you look at Zalatoris won that, Scotty Scheffler won that, I believe Scotty. Jordan Speed. Sahith. Yes. Sahith. All of these players, it wasn't that long ago when they would have been on the outside looking in, right? And so what I found today that Tiger Woods said that's probably going to echo for a minute or two is the fact that I don't think if we're reading tea leaves here, and that's what you have to do with Tiger Woods a lot of the time, if we're reading tea leaves, that I don't think Tiger likes the idea of this just being 70 players, which is fascinating to me because over the course of his career, I think he's always that's, wanted I mean, that's to a, play. That's, against, a, that's essentially just a bloated live, is it not? Uh, it is. It is. And look, it, it does away with the meritocracy. And Jaime Diaz threw that out there, and I would expect Jaime, <laughs> being the erudite that he is, to throw something like that out there. But there is something to be said for that, that you do have to create this path. I, I think we talked about this last week, sort of the Super League uh, documentary that's on Apple right now. The reason the Super League blew up in large part was because they were trying to get rid of the meritocracy of it all. They just wanted the top players to be perpetually the top players. Talk about the Liverpools, the Man U's, the, the Real Madrid's, all of these great teams. They were always just going to be the great teams. There was never going to be the opportunity for others to poke their head up. It is going to become an internal conversation, and I truly believe it's going to become an internal issue for the PGA Tour. Because right now, the vast majority of players will all say exactly what you just said. We're facing an existential threat, and something dramatic had to be done. And this is, this is our answer to that. This is what we're going to do to edge this off. It's only going to take a few months for all those players from 71 up to 200 to realize that this doesn't benefit me. This doesn't work for me. And for there to start to be pushback and what you're going to create is a serious internal conflict. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly going to be growing pains as we look forward to 2024. We're already seeing growing pains, the dichotomy uh, between the A Tour and the B Tour. That's kind of always existed, but now it's been made official with these quote unquote designated events. I think I would counter Rex with 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 the argument that this isn't going to be a meritocracy. But like those 70 players have still earned their spot. They've earned their right to be. In those tournaments, it's going to be largely based on the FedEx Cup standings is what my uh, understanding is. However, I think there is room. And what I would like to see is and this is something that they're going to have to figure out with the pack, policy board, Tiger, Rory, etc. Is how do you create an avenue for the hotshot new pro? 
how do you create an avenue for the player who is playing the best in kind of these B series events, right? These non-designated events. How do you still allow them to alter the trajectory of their career and play their way into this series? And, you know, whether you're, you can you can take a couple players from the DP World Tour who have been tearing up, who are leading the race to Dubai through X uh, cutoff date. Like there has to be some movement on the back end, whether it's five guys, 10 guys, 20 guys, whatever the number is, you have to have the set PJ Tour players who have earned their way, as well as some of these intriguing names, the hottest players, um, the, the, the players who are, or tearing it up in the corn factory, or whatever the case may be, you still have to reserve spots for that because that because those stories uh, can still resonate, and that's how you create new stars. I don't think it's less of a meritocracy. I think it's more the idea that this could become a closed shop, and that's dangerous for the PG Tour because then you just essentially have what is a bloated live model. The live model is forty-eight players who play against each other all year long, fourteen times a year. That's essentially what this designated uh, tournament schedule is going to be. Just call it seventy players. And so I don't, I don't I, think that's a good model. It, it needs to be shaken up at the back end. And I think that's what Tiger was trying to get at, which is interesting to me because he was a guy who throughout his career always wanted to play against smaller fields. Because if you played against smaller fields, it was easier to beat fewer players. That's just simple math. And in this particular case, at least if you're reading between the lines of what he said today, it sounds as if he wants to make sure that there are those safeguards in place that you talked about, that whatever level a player is that's performing at that level has the opportunity to play their way up and to get into these designated events. I, I don't know if they do it. Again, this is a this is a plane that's getting built while they're trying to fly it. So I'm not quite sure h- how you you know h- how you completely get this right. It took them a long time to get the FedEx point system right. Some might argue it's not even right yet. My guess is this is going to be an evolving process for a long time. Which is fine. I think 2024 is going to be a wake up call for everyone. It's going to be new. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be innovative. It's going to be. Um, Certainly a conversation starter among the haves and have nots on the PJ tour. I don't think that kind of these qualification criteria has to be as complicated as they're making it sound like the U S open. You just, so the qualification criteria and the, and the qualification categories just came out for the U S open. And one of those is like top 10 on the, on the PJ tours, FedEx cups points standings who are not otherwise eligible for the tournament. There is no reason why the, is there is exactly there is no reason why the PG tour cannot adopt those same sorts of qualification criteria for these designated events, say top three guys who are on the standings who are not otherwise eligible gain entry into the Genesis invitational. Like that's an easy way to get around it. Um, and that's something that I'd like to see moving forward. Um, and, and I think Adam Scott speaking with us on Wednesday, uh, just a newly elected PAC chairman. I'm curious to hear his thoughts as well on that. Did it make you as sad as it made me that golf's only contrib- contribution to the Super Bowl was bad grass, that the field was slippery and that was somehow golf's fault? Did that make you as sad as it made me? Didn't the USJ have some hand in that? Because of because of course they did. <sighs> Maybe uh, the guy's well, name. It, the guy's name is literally the sod father. The sod father, which is just the best name ever. The, I, I, the, the like, ninety-four-year-old sod father. I, I wish I knew that dude because I would love to have someone's name in my phone. I'm calling who you call him, the sod father. I've got some grass <laughs> issues. It's very serious. He's going to get me through this. Uh, my friends, it, my, 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 my my friends, my friends actually joke that uh, since he's ninety-four years old, maybe he was instead of fertilizing, he was just pouring like motor oil on it. And that's the reason why it was so slippery. Just just a, uh, just, a, just a just a low blow. You know what's funny is it came up in the meeting on Monday morning. Like there was a couple of, of producers who thought, well, you know, this is an interesting story or whatever. And I felt like I was the voice of reason going, I'm not quite sure you can develop a style, a brand, a variation of grass that could have held up to that. I, there was a report at halftime of Jalen Hurts going to longer cleats. Like they were, they're going to destroy that. Thing. Everyone was. Yeah. And, and you also factor in like they have to, they have to practice that whole Super Bowl halftime show for a week beforehand. So it's getting nothing but traffic. This is this is, you know, all the green around the swilk and burn at the old course that that gets chewed up just because that's just grass can't withstand that kind of pressure, that kind of pounding. And yet golf is getting hammered for this because oh, you guys couldn't create good grass. What was wrong with the Cardinal Stadium the rest of the year? There was no there was no Uh, issues the rest of the year. Why they have to change it? It's turf. It's turf the rest of the year. 
I, I don't think they like to play the the big game on turf. I think they like it on natural grass. And so you they had you they up, had no problem doing that last year at SoFi. Of course, uh, Odell Beckham <laughs> towards towards ACL, uh, which is uh, apparently want to happen uh, when you play on artificial turf. But I mean, you you do not have this issue where people are talking days after it, not just to, about the uh, phantom holding call, uh, but about the turf management system. I think less than the, the phantom holding call blew over in my mind because you have the, the guy who got the flag said, I, I held him. So doesn't that mitigate the conversation? Maybe. I can't complain about a letdown. speeding ticket if I tell the cop, letdown. yeah, yes, I was speeding. Like, <laughs> Maybe he was just saying that so he didn't get fined. Who knows? I don't know uh, what Bradbury's motivations were. Rihanna, shout out to Rihanna. This is an incredible uh, halftime show. Rex, we're, we're taping this on Tuesday, oh, on Wednesday. So high in Wednesday, the highly anticipated Netflix series, Full Swing. Uh, finally drops. I've had an opportunity to preview the entire series. Uh, have you been able to watch it? And if so, what are your initial impressions? Haven't watched it. Uh, normally wouldn't talk about another network show. Hmm. Interesting. So no thought stopper. Have you no, watched a single I'm sure, episode? Uh, I'm sure I'll watch it eventually. Uh, there's been a lot of things on my Netflix account that I've got to catch up on. I mean, I don't know if you've... Uh, You've been watching The Last of Us. I'm a big fan of The Mayor of no. Kingstown, which is taking me a little while to catch up on, which is very, good. I was very watching good. Full Swing. I was watching Full Swing, the Netflix I got a, uh, I, got a, series. I have a lot on uh, – but, I mean, if you feel compelled, by all means, what would you think of it? So I plowed through it last week. I had an opportunity to get uh, advanced screening of its eight episodes. Uh, all the episodes are roughly 45 minutes uh, in nature. Rex, this is a visual medium now uh, on YouTube, uh, so feel free to uh, head back to your seat uh, whenever you do get a minute. Uh, however, I thought it was an enjoyable watch. Um, I think I would cut, and I'm not going to do any spoilers because that's lame, uh, and, and I want people to decide for themselves. I will say it is more character-driven than I was anticipating. I didn't think it was necessarily going to be like an expose uh, or a deep dive into like the PGA Tour live split, but I would caution anyone who is about to dive into the series, like they're trying to very much develop characters, whether it's Tony Finau, Joel Damon, Matt Fitzpatrick, whatever the case may be, uh, and less about like live threat was always, I would call it like omnipresent, but it was never, there was never like a thorough examination or looking at it in rich detail. Like even with Ian Poulter and Brooks Kepka, there was kind of a, a slow build up to it. And then it was like, Oh yeah. And these guys went to live. I'm like, it just kind of disappeared. So that was interesting to me, uh, a little bit different than my expectations, but I did think it was an enjoyable watch. I don't think for golf fans, uh, it is, it's, it's a game changer necessarily. Um, but I did, th I, I found it enjoyable and it was kind of fun to see it captured in a different way than you and I, uh, just do on the website. Uh, no, I will watch it. I am curious. Like, and I knew it was going to be like my understanding was each player was essentially going to get their own episode. So there, there's certain two. Episodes. There's two players per episode. They kind of work in yeah. concert. Yeah. So of course I want to watch the episode that sort of give me Brooks Kepka. Give me a version of Brooks Kepka that doesn't come out to be a villain. And if they they can do that in an honest and, and fulfilling way then yes, I, I will be interested in seeing how that plays out. My bigger concern was, uh, not even concern, my bigger take is Conor McGregor. That's not right. Conor. Moore? Yes, thank you. I don't know why I had Conor McGregor on my mind. Conor Moore, another, thank you very much. Another, another, another tiny Irishman. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, one of them could, could uh, beat me up badly and the other could beat me up badly. Um, he, he did a, a funny spoof on it. I don't know if you saw it. But the best part about... Uh, the best part about it is he does a Alan Shipnuck impersonation that's better than Alan Shipnuck. It's amazing. <laughs> I will have to do it. I will, uh, now that I've finished the series, uh, I will have to find that. Shout out Connor Moore. Uh, he of Golf Pass fame, not Connor McGregor. No, I'm not Connor McGregor. Are you done or, or do company, I need to walk away again? Or a company is literally paying. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. Right. Uh, I, would, I would encourage people to watch it just to, have, to, just to form their own. Uh, opinions that was mine i also have a piece on golfchannel.com that dropped on tuesday morning talking to players about the level of access why they did it what they're hoping to gain from the experience um that i'd recommend people check out as well like you could certainly see that like a tony finau and joel damon were more accessible more uh willing to share their stories let their guards down than say a jordan spieth was or a colin morikawa were who kind of uh 
kept cameras that kept the camera crew i'd say like an arm's length and didn't let them into their at-home lives they were more focused on training preparation uh and things of that nature so different strokes for different folks uh but i do think those who opened up most tony finau joel damon those are the highlights uh, of the show for me as well as brooks kepka looking as vulnerable and as forlorn as we have ever seen rex you did not watch the super bowl so i cannot ask you what was I on did. the grill oh I, you did you, super bowl. oh you got to see it okay you got, right here, you right just there on, that, you just, on that bed right there. Yeah. You just had room service, uh, which is very sad. I sent you a snappy chat uh, for my party where we did sma- uh, smash burgers, uh, Italian sausage, actually beer brats, uh, as well as way too many, mm. way too many sides and appetizers to go along with the Duval light keg flowing from the keg. Ray. This was kind of the uh, introductory party to the backyard. People were loving it. You and I will be doing the podcast next week. From the backyard, uh, it'll be the debut on the Golf no, Channel not podcast next week. with Rex. I'm at the Honda Classic next week. It's nope. not next week. Uh, I will be doing it. I will be doing it next week. Yeah, right. uh, you can do it. You can do it from your uh, outdated hotel room at PGA <laughs> National. So that will be that will be that will be the worldwide debut of uh, my outdoor kitchen on this Golf Channel podcast with Rex and Love. I don't know how you guys are consuming this. If it's on iTunes, if it's on Spotify, if it's on YouTube, uh, we thank you all for watching, listening, whatever it is you may be doing i well, hope you guys enjoy this week's genesis invitational make sure to check out rex for the rest of the week on golf today co-hosting with damon hack uh, make sure to check on out thursday, all my reports you and i on we're gonna do a podcast on golf today early early thursday morning you and i podcast how's that supposed to go how is that supposed to go i was asked if that if i was interested in this and i said if you want five minutes on grilling in the middle of your golf show then absolutely we are all over this we can do this. Like, trust me, we can do it. By that time, I might be talking to the bunk mate again. I'll have an update on the bunk mate. There'll be plenty for us to come. Please do. <laughs> that's that's the first thing we have to talk about. I can give her a belated <laughs> Valentine's Day shout out. I shout out my wife as well, uh, who is the absolute best. I did send her. I not only send her flowers, gave her chocolates, mm. sent her a nice note, uh, because I am husband of the year for the year 2023. Thank you guys for listening to this edition, Golf Channel Pod with Rex and Lap. Talk to you next week.